What's going on all my beautiful people? Welcome back. I am truly, truly blessed to see all you guys back to another episode of Sealed Strategics. And on this episode, we're going to be going into a topic from a question that was asked in the comments in YouTube. The question was, is there an advantage of having a red dot on your EDC pistol, aka your everyday carry pistol? Is there an advantage? That is today's episode. Alright, so let's get on with this topic. The question was asked in the comments on YouTube, is there an advantage to having a red dot on your everyday carry pistol? Here we have it. These are four or some of our everyday carries that we have in our household right now. And as you can see, all four of them have red dots on them. <laughs> so, if that alone doesn't answer your question, then I really don't. There, there's really no reason for me to go further because this right here should answer the question. Is there an advantage to having red dots on your everyday carry pistol? This is my belief. Like I said, I am by no means no subject matter expert. I am no professional. I am no expert in the field. These are just my personal opinions and how I feel. A lot of people are going to say you really don't need a red dot on your everyday carry pistol because most self-defense shootings happen within three to five feet three to five yards type distances right a lot of people say is that when you're in a self-defense situation and you have to draw your weapon from concealment a lot of the times a person is so close and it happens so fast that you're not going to have time to find a red dot and you're literally going to be pointing and shooting point shooting and that's true that is true a lot of times if something happens somebody attacks you your life is in danger this person assaulting you literally just going to pull your gun out point and shoot that is true but my thing is is that even though the person is going to be so close that you might not even need your red dot and you might not even need to use the iron sights because they're so close the first thing that i'm going to say about that is i would much rather have a red dot and don't need it than to need a red dot and don't have it that's just my that's just number one number one i would much rather have it and don't need it than to need it and not have it the reason why i say that is is because just because most self-defense situations happen within three to five yards it happens super close and it happens super fast and you might not aim to shoot why wouldn't you want to have that in case you need it because not all self-defense shootings happen in close proximity but most of them do let's say let's just let's just make up some numbers let's say out of a hundred shootings right let's say 90 percent of those shootings let, let's matter of fact let's say 95 of those shootings was within three to five yards and a person didn't even look at their iron sights they literally pointed and shoot let's say 95 percent 95 of those people 95 out of those hundred shootings they just literally draw the weapon point and shoot what about the other five percent you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't talk about that. A lot of people don't have that discussion. Yes, the majority of the times, most likely if you draw your weapon in self-defense, it's going to happen so quick and happen so close that you don't need your iron sights or your red dot. But, big but, <laughs> what about that 5% chance of those 5 people out of the 100 who needed to actually aim and shoot? You know what I'm saying? Like I said, even though the numbers, according to the numbers and the, and the statistics, it states that if you use a gun in self-defense, you most likely won't have to actually aim. You're literally just going to point and shoot because it happens so close and so fast. What happened to the other percent that you do need it? Wouldn't you rather want to have the advantage if you need it? If a bad guy is going to pull a gun on me, I want every advantage that I possibly have. Whether it's having a light so I can see in the dark, whether it's having a red dot on my pistol so I can be a better shot, more accurate and fast. So like I said, I would much rather have it 
and don't need it than to need it and don't have it. And a perfect example of that, the last shooting that we had in the mall. By the time this video come out, I hope to God that there's not another shooting, but the last mall shooting where the state just passed constitutional carry 17 days prior to the shooting and this person, law-abiding citizen, good guy with a gun, was constitutionally carrying in a mall when some random mass shooter dude decided he wants to shoot a bunch of people and this dude braced himself up against a wall and took 10 shots and hit the mass shooter eight times you know what I'm saying a quick side note about that what really got me upset with that whole situation is that after this situation happened and this law-abiding citizen stopped this potential mass shooter eight times killed him dead in his tracks the media was making the law-abiding citizen out to be a villain I can't make this up. This law-abiding citizen, good guy with a gun, stopped the bad guy with a gun, and the media is portraying the good guy with a gun as the villain. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, that's that's a whole nother topic. But anyways, back to my point. I don't know the whole details of his weapons. I don't know what weapon he was carrying. I don't know. I'm assuming that he most likely didn't have a red dot. I don't know. I don't know. If you guys know any details about the situation, whether or not he had a red dot or he was shooting iron sights, let me know in the comments because I really don't know. So I can't say for sure that he did have a red dot and I can't say for sure that he didn't have a red dot. But I'm going to assume because he shot 8 out of 10, he made 8 out of 10 hits and hit the target, I'm going to assume that he didn't have a red dot. I'm just making an assumption because I feel that if he had a red dot, all 10 shots would have hit the target. That's just me. And mind you, the distance was pretty good. I think it was like 40 or 50 yards away. I'm not too sure. I think it was like in between 40 to 50 yards. That's a good distance. I'm not downplaying Homeboy. Homeboy's a hero in my book. And I wish we can get him on here, two-way calling and have him up here on the show so we can talk about it. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a minute before that happens. And, you know, I'm just a little small channel, so nobody cares about me. But I would like to have that discussion with him to ask him about the details so we can have that talk to see if he feel that he would probably be a better shot with or without a red dot. But Anyways, we'll see. Hopefully one day that could possibly happen. We'll see. I don't think that he was using a red dot. I really don't. If he did, that's still pretty good. 8 out of 10. That's that's 80%. That, that's, that's passing in my book. But I felt that if he possibly had a red dot, and I hope that he didn't have a red dot, and I'm talking about if he had a red dot. I felt that if he did have a red dot, it would be 10 and 10. It would be 100%. That's just my personal belief. Is there an advantage of having a red dot on your everyday carry pistol? Yes, I believe there is. Because in the event that you're in a self-defense situation and it's not within three to five yards and it's a little bit out 15 20 30 yards out i feel that if you have a red dot you're going to be more comfortable you're going to be more confident and you're going to be more accurate you're going to be able to pick up on your target faster than iron sights and now i know there's the iron sight boys out there who are going to say i'm pretty fast and i get it if you train every day and you train and you train with your pistol and you train with your iron sights you're going to be fast just like if you train every day and you train and you train with your red dots you're going to be fast so the key word here is you have to train you know what i'm saying somebody who's trained with irons can take those shots and be pretty fast and acquire the target and engage the target fast yes i get that if you train but if you're one of those people who carry a gun and you just go to the range you know every once every couple of months just to stay proficient that's not wrong i'm not i'm not talking trash at all if that's how if that's all the time that you got because of your job family whatever you got going on if the only time you get to go to the range is once a month or once every two once every three months that's all you can afford that's fine as long as you're training and you're keeping up with your fundamentals that's okay that's fine with my book as long as you go out there and you shoot whenever you can i'm not saying you gotta go out and spend thousands of thousands of dollars and shoot thousands of thousands of rounds so you can be an expert shooter i'm not saying that because not everybody is dedicated to guns like that not everybody has the same love and passion as some of us do for guns and we like to go to the range as much as we can some people just have a gun just to have it just for self-defense they're not no gun gurus they're not no tactical experts and not out there shooting every weekend but they just want a gun to, for self-defense so they go to the range once every couple months just to stay proficient just to make sure that you know they're still a good shot and that's good that's what we want you to do we're not saying you have to go to the range and shoot 3,000, 4,000 rounds every range session like some of us do. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that. Yes, I feel that there's an advantage because although, let's say 95% of the time, you might not need that red dot, you might not need your iron sights, I really feel that one day, somehow, some way, you might fall in that 5% where you need to actually use your fundamentals, good grip, 
target acquisition, you know, trigger squeeze. You got to use all the basic fundamentals. If you have a red dot, to me, that helps alleviate some of the stress of shooting irons. If you're in a situation where somebody just, if you're in a mall and somebody just pulls out a gun and starts shooting people and you have a gun and you take it out, that alone in itself, being in that situation alone is so stressful. Your adrenaline is kicking in, your heart is beating, your brain is just traveling a billion miles per hour because you're in a situation, it's a life and death situation. If you make the wrong move, you can die. If you make the wrong move, other people can die. A lot of other people with a mass shooter. So when you're in that situation, a lot of us are going to sit out here and sit back and look at it and be like, oh, I would have done this. I would have done that. I mean, you never know. Not everybody's going to respond the same. When you're in that situation and shit hits the fan and it's real and there's real bullets and you're, there's real danger, there's real chance of you losing your life. Adrenaline, stress, and anxiety, fear, everything is hitting you all at once. Why wouldn't you want that advantage of having a red dot while you're under all that stress? Just being scared, you know, because somebody's shooting killing people in front of your eyes you're dealing with that stress why wouldn't you want to have that advantage that you don't have to sit there and try to worry about lining up your iron sights okay the front the front side is good okay the rear sights is lined up okay this the front side is directly in the middle boom and you take the shot why wouldn't you want to alleviate some of that stress and some of that you know what i'm saying because like i said your brain is going to be going a billion miles per hour so now you got to sit here and try to talk to yourself and try to, okay, remember the basics, remember the fundamentals, remember the fundamentals. Sorry for interrupting the video. I know you guys are all into it, but I need to take a quick second to give a big shout out and thank you to the channel sponsors, Wicked Arms Customs and Tactical Pontoon Triggers. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Thank you guys for sponsoring the channel. Now let's get back to this content. I feel that if you have a red dot, that's going to help alleviate some of that stress because you literally just have to make sure you put that dot on the target. You hold it steady, put the dot on the target, take the shot. To me, that's an advantage. That's a lot better than trying to make sure your front side is lined up, now the rear side is lined up with the front side, and now, boom, you take the shot, now you recoil, you know what I'm saying, now you're back on target, you got to check your sights, and to me, I don't care how good you are. I don't care if you've been shooting iron sights since the 1970s. If you have a red dot and you're under stress, real life stress, not competition stress, because competition stress and real life stress are two different stresses. When you're in a competition, your life isn't on the line. Yeah, you might think your life is on the line because you're trying to be the best of the best. You're trying to beat the clock, but the clock isn't shooting back at you. The clock isn't trying to kill you. The clock isn't trying to take your life. So competition stress and real life, real world stress is two different stressors. So in competition, you might be fast and finding your iron sights and you know getting, getting off those shots because that target isn't trying to kill you or kill other people. But in real life, in the real world if you're in that situation someone's trying to kill you someone's trying to kill a bunch of people around you you're gonna be stressed you're gonna be super stressed you're gonna be in a whole nother level of stress that you've never been to before your body's gonna react adrenaline you're gonna start shaking if you're shaking and you got iron sights you might miss that shot who's to say that that didn't happen with our hero shooter in the mall who stopped that mass shooter maybe i don't know i wasn't there i don't like i said i don't know if he had a red dot or not i'm just assuming that he didn't have a red dot i'm assuming that he was shooting with iron sights and that's that's why he missed those two shots. What if it was because he was shaking? When you're under stress like that, when you're under anxiety, you can't help, you can't control your body. Everybody can say, oh, you can control it. Yes, after a while, you have to talk yourself down, control your breathing, focus on your breathing, you know what I'm saying? Slow your heart rate. Yes, you can do that, but if somebody's actively shooting, you don't have time to sit there and close your eyes and go into a wusa mode. All those guys out there who's saying, oh, you know what I'm saying? You don't need a red dot, you don't need a red dot. Look, and if this good guy who shot that mass shooter in the mall was using iron sights, the iron sight boys are gonna be like, see, you don't need no red dot. You see, he took, he hit eight out of 10. But what I'm trying to say is that maybe because he was under stress, anxiety, shaking, maybe that's why he missed those two shots. I don't know. Could he miss those two shots even with a red dot? Yes, it's possible. You, you, you're going to miss at 40 yards. It's easy to miss a target of 40 yards. You know what I'm saying? With iron sights and a red dot. But I feel for me personally, I feel a red dot gives you that advantage, especially at distance. At 30 plus yards, a red dot is going to give you an advantage because you don't have to focus and concentrate as much. I'm not saying that you're not going to focus and concentrate with a red dot, but I'm saying if you got a red dot on there, you literally, as soon as that dot touched the target, in one of my videos that I did, the red dot training with my wife, I did a drill called a parallax drill. And what the parallax drill was is that no matter where you see the dot on the glass, let me go ahead and unload this. No matter where you see the dot on the glass, when you're aiming that red dot, no matter where you see it, I see the dot right there, right now it's in the middle. 
if the dot is in the top right corner or the dots in the bottom left corner it doesn't matter wherever that dot is on the glass and the red dot and you pull the trigger the bullet is going to go there or at least it's going to be super close it might not be perfectly on the dot but it's going to be close so what the parallax drill does is it shows you that the dot doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle of the glass to take that shot as long as the dot is on that target as long as the red dot on this glass is superimposed onto that target and you take that shot the round is gonna go where that dot is so if you're on the stress and you're shaking as long as that dot is on that target and you take that shot the round is gonna go where that dot is that's what the parallax drill does it shows you that the red dot doesn't have to be perfectly centered in the middle of the glass just take that shot so I believe that if you have a red dot on your pistol and your everyday carry pistol, it's going to be so close that you're probably not going to use a red dot. You're probably not going to use an iron sight. You're literally probably just going to just take your gun out, point and shoot. But what happened to that small chance, that small percentage of self-defense shooting out there where you have to use your fundamentals. You have to line up your iron sights. You have to make sure you have good precision. You have to, you know, at those distance shots, like I said, anything beyond 30 yards it's easy to miss a target. It's easy to miss a 10 inch target at 30 yards with or without a red dot. But I feel with a red dot, it's easier because the red dot is there. It's not like the iron sights. Let me try to line this up. You see when you're shooting, so check this out. When you're shooting, when you're shooting a pistol, you have to make sure you see how the iron sight, you see how my finger is down, the iron sight is down. So you have to make sure, look at that. You see how I point down? You see that? I'm gonna miss right there. If I bring it back up, I can't, hold on, I'm trying to see. There you go. See, I have to line this up with my, and boom, you know, I can take that shot. If I go upwards, I'm going to miss. This, this, the, the iron sight has to be perfectly in the middle. So while you're shooting and your life is on the line, this is what you got to be messing around with. This is literally what you're messing around with. I can't, <laughs> I think that's my finger right there. I can't really see. So this is what you got to mess around with. You got to be messing around with the iron sight this is what you gotta mess around with in a real life situation so you see that so it has to be perfectly lined up in the middle to take that shot now imagine this is the red dot now all they gotta do is put this dot on the target wherever this dot is that's where the bullet's gonna go so if I put it here boom take the shot the bullets there if I put it here boom it's going if I put it there boom no matter where I put that dot wherever this dot is the bullet is going to go. The round is going to go wherever I put that dot. And you see, I'm trying to show you visually what I'm talking about. So this, imagine this is a red dot on your gun on the glass. You put that, wherever you put that shot, it's going to go there. So if I put the red dot there, boom, it's going to go there. If I, boom, it's going to go there. Boom, it's going to go there. Boom, it's going to go there. Just imagine, you saw how fast I was. Wherever I put that dot, that's where the bullet went. Now imagine you're using your iron sights and now you got to line this up. Now I, I'm using the, I'm using my monitor to, to try to see where it is. So now I got to line this up. Boom, now I can take that shot. Boom, a recoil. Now I got to come back. Now look, look how long it's taking me. Boom, the recoil. I got to come back, put line it up. Oh, wrong side. And that's what I'm talking about. This is what you have to play around with when you're shooting in a real life stressful, life is on the line, real world danger. You have to sit there and play around with front sights and rear sights and make sure that they're lined up. And to me, red dots, you just take the dot. This is the dot. You just put it. Boom. 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 That's what I'm talking about. That's why I feel having a red dot is an advantage because you're going to be able to acquire your targets faster. You don't have to sit there and play around and make sure the front and rear is lined up. You don't have to make sure you know you don't you don't got to be doing this with the gun. You literally just point the dot. Boom. Shot. Boom. Shot. Boom. Shot. Boom. Shot. And that's how quick it is you'll be able to acquire targets and take the shot. When you're in a self-defense, real world, life or death situation, every second counts because every incident that i seen on self-defense shooting you literally have this much time to think get your weapon out and on target you don't have time to sit there playing around and hoping to god that you hit and a lot of self-defense situations that i've videos that i've seen or people in real life self-defense shootings a lot of the rounds miss a lot of the rounds miss because they literally just point and they're they're shooting they they're just shooting because you have to do it so quickly so i believe especially if you train on a regular basis and you go to the range and you train close quarter shooting you pull your gun out i did it in one of my videos with my wife the red dot training with my wife where i literally told her just draw and shoot don't aim don't aim the red dot don't aim the iron sights just take your weapon out of holster draw and shoot take that shot and what that did for her is she realized that as long as she focused on where she wants the bullet to go 
the bullet's gonna go in that vicinity. And she started realizing that that she because a lot of the times when my wife is on the range and she's drawing, she'll sit there like this forever searching. She's fishing for the red dot. And I'm like, babe, in a self-defense situation, when this person is this close to you, up three yards or less, you don't have time to be sitting there looking for the dot. When that person is so close to you, literally just gonna take the gun out and shoot, just point and shoot. And she started realizing that day on the range that wherever she looked, wherever she put her eyes, the bullet the round when she draw her weapon and take the shot the round is in that vicinity like about this big it's in a you know like a three to four inch vicinity and when she taking that shot and that builds up her confidence because now she knows that if something happens to somebody super close to her she don't have to sit there and worry about trying to oh let me find a red dot she literally knows that she can pull the gun out point and shoot as long as she's looking at the area that she wants the round to go to the round is going to go to that area to answer your question is having red dots in your edc your everyday carry pistols an advantage yes i believe it's an advantage even though most shootings happen so close and so fast that you don't have time to look at your sights or your red dot i still feel in the event in the small chance the small small chance that you might need to shoot somebody in self-defense at a distance the red dot is going to be a big advantage. That's what I feel. But anyways, man, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you guys like the video. Share it. Make sure you guys turn on the notification bell so you guys get notified every time we drop another bang, 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 bang video. I know you guys are checking out my t-shirt, man. I'm famous in YouTube t-shirt. If you guys like this t-shirt, make sure you guys hit up the merch shop. The link will be in the description. Get your two-way apparel. We got many other two-A and gun-loving designs on there. Go ahead and hit that link in the description. Show your support to the Second Amendment by rocking your two-A t-shirts. I'm slowly trying to get famous in YouTube. We're not there yet, but we're getting there, man. Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys in the next video. And remember, be greater than you were yesterday. Train so you're always ready. So when shit is the fan, you don't have to get ready. Stash Sergeant Sealy is out.